tape recorder became extinct. He dreamed of being the late night DJ of the Big 610 KIL team. And that dream came true when he landed that job at Killer, what he calls his first real job in radio. After a couple of years at KILT and 96.5 KAUM, the Colonel moved to Afternoons at KLOL 101. His ratings were so big that Crosstown Rival 97 Rock hired him away to create a rock and roll dynasty. Such was his fame that Miami's 97 GTR and Zeta 4 hired him as program director. But his love for Houston was too much, and he went goodbye to the Everglades and Alligators and returned to the Bayou City, where he set amazing record ratings at Oldies 94.5 KLD. <laughs> Tonight's in the Coliseum. Night Ranger, thank you for coming by. Indeed, Colonel St. James here, 101 KLOL. Houston, you've got to tell the greatest rock and roll station in the greatest city in America, 97 Rock. Drummer Michael Shreve was 16 years old. What will I do, Sam? Colonel St. James here. I guess the weather is a good chance of rain. You're not 50% tonight. Angela. Lows in the mid-70s. High tomorrow, back there, 90. Partly cloudy. It's 85 degrees on the island. Galveston, it's 86 degrees. There's Stevie Wonder. And up tight. Up tight. Here we go. 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 Here
Amazing Steve people. Lundy. Amazing people. Who? Steve Lundy. Yeah, I'll get to him. All right. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you never want to bring crash to one of these things. You just don't want to. Uh, anyway, no. But there was great talent all over the dial. We used to listen to Wild Bill Bailey and Archie Anzi at Kick. Skipper Lee Frazier and Grandma Gigi on uh, Gigi, uh, KCOH and Rick Robertson and the Bill the Wild Child Williams on KYOK. It was phenomenal radio in the 60s and late, late 60s, early 70s here. Was, I grew up in a great environment. And as I was growing toward becoming a professional announcer, a professional disc jockey, there were some people that I heard that I wanted to emulate their sound as close to as I could. People like Steve Lundy. Barry Kay and my mentor, C.C. McCartney. I couldn't be here without them, and I want to thank them all very, very much. And I think they're all members of the Texas Radio Hall of Fame, if I'm not mistaken. There you go. And I got to thank Bill Young. Bill Young was one of those program directors that set the bar about here. And he never wanted to let it down just so a guy like me could join his staff. And that was my dream, to be the night jock at KILT. Bill wasn't always kind in his meetings with me, <laughs> but he was always honest. It took me four interviews and over five years to get hired at the Big 610. And when I did, he instilled a work ethic in me that I still carry into the Aero Studios every single night. And I couldn't have done it without him either. I'll never forget that first night at Kilt, though. I tell you, it was like I walked into this studio and there was just so much energy in there from all the great jocks and the great talent that had been there before me. And the room almost said to me, kid, I really don't need you here. I can do this without you, so you better keep up. And again, I carried that with me at KLOL and 97 Rock. My buddies were over there from 97 Rock. Thanks for coming out, guys. And throughout my entire career. This has been an incredible experience. I didn't get to tell my joke but that's okay. <laughs> that's all right. It's been an incredible experience. This is sort of like the maraschino cherry on top of the hot mix. So. Thanks to Joe, who I've known forever, and thanks to all the folks at the Texas Radio Hall of Fame for having this, having this really, and having a Radio Hall of Fame where all the greats can be remembered. And if you're up here like I am now, and I'm being inducted into the hall, it's a real humbling experience. I think I can speak for all of us that have been here before. And it's an experience that I will never, ever forget as long as I live. Thank you all so very much. God bless you.